Now in 1946, Mze Jomo Kenyatta lived in a house next to the then Kenya Teachers College in Gidonguri. The man would later become Kenya's first president, bought a heavy metallic safe in which he stored vital documents. And tonight, Wilkie Sanyabwa tells us that story of a house and a safe that got secrets from Kenya's past. The old and the new find a meeting place here, in a house that has stood for over six decades. It sits silently, an ordinary looking house behind the Gidonguri district headquarters, holding on to extraordinary secrets. This was first president Mze Jomo Kenyatta's home for years, before he was arrested and taken to Kapenguria. Kenyatta returned to the country in 1946, after 18 years abroad. He reunited with an old friend, Ronald Ngala, and agreed to teach at the Kenya Teachers College in Gidonguri. With a new job in place, he needed a home within walking distance. And when the house was complete, Jomo became the first occupant of the house next to Ronald Ngala's. The new house served as a meeting place for local and regional leaders fighting against colonial rule. Africa siku hiyo ilikuwa kuna nchi ya Afrika ilikuwa na uhuru. Walikuwa na walikuwa na jadiliana hapa kutoka viongozi kutoka uh, Africa nzima. Sensitive documents and money were often entrusted to Kenyatta for safekeeping. It was only logical that shortly after he arrived, Kenyatta procured a metallic safe. So heavy was it, it is reported that 30 men were required to carry the safe into the house, but only Kenyatta had a key. Wakati huwa pesa zilikuwa na jengwa kwa, zilikuwa na rokotu wa kila mahali katika Kenya. Na age group. Hapa hiko marika ya miaka na miaka. Miaka kama tatu hivi, nafanya rika moja. Rahu nafanyua kiongozi mmoja kutoka hili ya kama hii ya kiambu ya kukota pesa mahali pesa litapere kuwa za kujenga shule na za kuwakoa nchi yetu. Kwa hili yo, siku hiyo hakuna bengi. Activities at the house came to an abrupt halt in 1952. At the height of the liberation struggle, Jomo Kenyatta was arrested together with five others and sentenced to prison in Kapenguria. He would remain behind bars until 1961, even after he was released and went on to become Kenya's first president, never again would Kenyatta set foot in the house. Nobody could find the key to the safe, and it is reported that it has never been opened since. Kama aliwacha, ilitolewa na wazungu wala walivulidu, kwa zwa walikaa kwa meka mingi, na tena dani ya nyumba. Mutu naweza kujua tu ni, ni, ni. Ile kitu tu tunaweza kusema, na tunataka ije hapa, ni zile guwa likuwa na vaa, kwa zwa walikuwa na vaa majaki tihile ya, ya ngozi, na makofia hile mkubwa, hile ya skauti, alikuwa na vaa hizo. But the house found new occupants. It was the property of the provincial administration and housed various officials. The current occupant is a veterinary officer. She and her family have made a cozy home here. But the history of the house has not been completely forgotten. The National Museums of Kenya has gazetted the house. It has, however, never moved or opened the safe. Among those who know the story, it is rumored that Kenyatta's locked safe may contain vital documents such as original maps that mark out Kenya's boundaries. Others, however, believe that all valuable documents were taken out long before Kenyatta was arrested, leaving behind only items of sentimental value. Wakati alijua atashikwa, ile mambo muhimu yote alitua. Na wakati hatujua lipeleka watu. Mahali alifika. Zile zitu naweza patikana huko tutu ni mambo tu ya shule, document ya shule wakati likuwa na endetu. Na kama sasa hiyo hali ya watu ya Afrika, naweza patikana huko. Kwa sababu wakati alifikwa, 1952 mwezi wa kumi, haku hudi hapa. 67 years after the safe was carried in, it sits silently in the house in which Kenyatta once lived, the silent witness to the country's history, jealously holding on to its secrets. Wilkis Anyabwa for the 50-year series.